Okay, so we are recording and we are live and uh, welcome everybody to what we call join the revolution. Uh, I'm ready to get off of it now. <laughs> new, uh, new media, social video and political campaigns. The interface between new media, uh, video uh, and of course politics, uh, campaigns, elections and so on. And I have here uh, uh, two of my good, good friends. Uh, my political uh, chum, uh, Jim Brown, uh, a real statesman and and uh, a person who has been very involved in the political process for the state of Louisiana. I'm going to have you all give your own intros. And uh, Scott um, uh, Sc uh, Scowcroft, who I've gotten to know over the last year and a half, two years on Google Hangouts. And he is an expert in uh, in videos and finishing videos. And I thought this would be a really good opportunity for us to kind of chat and to uh, get an idea, get the ball rolling uh, relative to politics and elections. So let me start with Scott. Scott, uh, why don't you just say a few words to the audience? And by the way, we are recording this. Um, I will be putting this up on Bayou Buzz. Likewise, I will be putting this up on uh, uh, different excerpts on Bayou Buzz. So any information that we provide, you know, is going to be informational and, and uh, you yeah, know, will be available. So, Scott, why don't you give us a little background, and after that, uh, go ahead, Jim, and then we'll ju uh, I've got a couple questions to ask. Well, uh, thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me to participate in this discussion. I think it's going to be exceedingly interesting because politics – uh, especially at the local level, I believe, legs behind some of the other sectors in society. And there are candidates who are just really missing out on a, on a great deal. My background is uh, having helped citizen producers of television for over 20 years in the 1980s and the 1990s as Seattle's uh, director of community access television. We went out and broadcast citizen produced programming to over 100,000 households in King County. And uh, many of those programs were live. Uh, when live streaming video such as we're on right now came along and it's been growing for the last two or three years, I knew I'd found a home again because that's exactly what we're able to do. It puts power of video back in the hands of individuals and it doesn't have to be mediated by television stations and FCC licenses or the cable company or anything else. We can do as we please on the platform and it just becomes our job to become skillful on the production and also on the marketing side. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jim? Well, I'm glad to participate. This is not my foray, the technology, and I want to learn more about the foray. I was in, in public life for 28 years, uh, held, I think, six statewide offices in Louisiana, and uh, now I'm doing a nationally syndicated radio program that I'd love to tie in uh, with this concept. Uh, I'm heard coast to coast on Sunday mornings. I also write a nationally syndicated column. You can read it. In fact, I've just uh, got to sit down after this program and finish up my column for tomorrow on buyoubuzz.com. But you go to my website at jimbrownusa.com and find out all, uh, all about uh, uh, what my approach, what I do. I want to say this starting off. Uh, as picking up what Scott said, I think that candidates have really missed an opportunity. We're in the early stages of doing this kind of thing, of, of these broadcasts. Here's why they're missing it. Uh, number one, they don't understand it. Most candidates don't understand just what's involved. They think it's so complicated and they've got to go take courses. It's not that complicated. But number two, they don't realize the value uh, first of all, few candidates I've come across really keep a detailed email list, have a Twitter feed, uh, have a Facebook page. They put one up for show, but they've, you know, uh, knowing what I know now, when I was in politics before, I'd always want your card. Every time I'd meet somebody, I'd take their card and put it onto my mailing list, which, of course, costs stamps and all that kind of thing. Well, today I'd want your email address. And if I were a typical uh, statewide official in Louisiana over a four-year period, I'd want to put together 30, 40, 50,000 uh, email addresses. Then you could let people know about this concept just via email, via Twitter, by Facebook. Most candidates have not done that yet. So we're on the cutting edge of what I think will be pretty much the norm four or five years from now. Okay, so uh, just out of curious, curiosity, um, uh, and just this is just an open question. 
But what do you think the reluctance might be? I mean, Jim, you've been involved in politics for, for quite a while. Uh, did you tell me 27 years? Was that the magic number? 28. <laughs> 28, okay. You can okay. tell with gray hairs, can't you, Steve? <laughs> well, yeah, mine or yours. But, you know, hit. What's the reluctance? I mean, I, you know, I know that, and I, Scott, you can certainly answer this too. Um, politicians want to be perfect. They don't want to have any anything uh, that could possibly go wrong with the presentation, with the way they look, the way they sound, and so on. So is this a real detriment, uh, this type of technology, whether it be, say, uh, Blab or Google Hangouts or, uh, or, or Meerkat? or Periscope, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, is it, are we pushing the envelope too fast for uh, the politicians to be able to hang on and say, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to do it? Let me answer, uh, give you a general answer on that. Then let Scott get into the, uh, more of the technology aspects of it while I step aside, get a cup of coffee. Here's what we happened. We transited from retail politics, which I just happened to love. That's my foray, being an older guy, I guess. But I love I love going to parades and fairs and festivals and throwing candy like Mardi Gras and uh, uh, networking and calling all the radio shows and and shaking hands. That was the foray of what it was up till about, say, 15 years ago. Then the political uh, consultants all said, hey, it's all TV. If you got money, even in local races, put it on TV and radio. That's all you have to do. And if you have enough money to do it, you don't have to go out and do the retail politics anymore. So that's kind of where it is today. And very few of the officials running this time have picked up on that. Now, David Vitter, because of the of the uh, t uh, technological people he has in Washington, uh, the Republican Party has picked up on these telephone calls where he'll have town meetings. You and I will get these calls and say, hey, is David Vitter punch one? And you can talk to me right now in a town meeting I'm having on such and such a subject. To some degree, Vitter started along that line. But no candidate in Louisiana I've seen have effectively used the technology we're talking about here now. And here's the mistake they're making. Even if you don't get a lot of viewers that watch this kind of thing, the fact that you're sending out emails telling what you're doing and you're talking about it shows you're a little ahead of the game. You're on the edge of technology. And so voters who have never watched you will say, gosh, I like that guy. He's been he's able to to put on these very special programs and talk to me over the Internet. And so uh, a lot of it, it makes it very appealing, in my opinion. The problem is that 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 just hasn't gotten across yet, even to the consultants. You see, you don't have consultants out there telling people, look, you got to put this kind of program together. They are putting the little advertisements on Facebook, that kind of thing, but nothing like someone like Scott could, could, could sit down and do. And Steve, you guys together could offer a, a vast range of products for these candidates they're missing out on. I think that's going to change four years from now. It's a whole different world. Now, Scott, I didn't, didn't want to dominate. I'll throw to you in terms of, of what the options are right there while I get a quick cup of coffee. Well, sure. And you'll be able to hear us as we're talking as well. And good points, Jim. You know, I, I think one of the reasons your, your question, Stephen, is why aren't politicians using social media? And I think one of the reasons is that they are social media illiterate. They're not using social media in their businesses. They're not using it in their pers personal professional lives. Uh, and there, and it doesn't occur to them to use social media for for the political campaigns. That coupled with uh, the campaign managers, uh, you might have a point there that that they are very cautious. They don't want to lose control, uh, and it's also not what they were trained to do. They know how to go out and do retail or place ads or do brochures and all, you know, direct camps, all of that. It's a brand new skill set. And quite frankly, a lot of the people who are directing the campaigns, in my opinion, just don't have that skill set. It's exactly the same thing that is happening in the real world or the other parts of the sector where you've got advertising agencies that know little or nothing about how to mount a proper social media campaign. So if there was a, um, if there was a reason for that, I think it's just that there's a, an illiteracy out there in terms of the decision makers. What do you think, Stephen? Yeah, well, I, I, I yeah, certainly uh, don't disagree uh, with what you're saying in terms of the literacy. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that they're really, you know, they 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 don't use the type of tools that I think that they could use to be very effective. Uh, I think that part of it is that they have an aversion to anything that they don't know. Um, secondly, is I think they're just overwhelmed, and so I think what needs to happen is that you know people slow slowly but surely uh, wins with uh, using a particular feature and uh, or makes great waves and nothing negative occurs. And as a result of that, I think that, you know, the gold rush in a sense begins. Uh, I, I, I think that um, a good example, as uh, Jim had mentioned, is that we have a guy named uh, David Vitter who's running for U.S. Uh, Senate. I'm sorry, governor, he's U U.S. Senator. And uh, basically, um, he probably, I think, is mastering or his campaign is mastering online uh, everything. Uh, and although he himself, certainly, I, I don't think he's got the knowledge, experience and so on. But still, he's he's taking the risk and, and it's working for him. I think it's working uh, tremendously for him. One of the things he did that I had not seen anybody do was to um, – last, uh, I guess, a couple of months ago, took a video of himself during the middle of a campaign. Uh, and I think he was probably using uh, iPhone or Android. Uh, and then he put that up and, you know, uh, uh, edited it, put it up and sent it out by email to his uh, 80,000, 100,000 followers or so. So the message that he wanted to get across had to be done very quickly. It wasn't something that he would be able to spend a lot of time planning, going to a studio, et cetera. It's something that, you know, he wanted to get out there right away. And that's the real benefit of this type of technology, that you are able to get information out right away. It may not be, as you know, uh, Scott, since you've dealt with this for many years, uh, it's certainly not TV quality. You and I have talked about that in terms of, you know, not being TV quality. But I think people are getting used to that. I mean, uh, David Vitter being a really prime example of that. Uh, of all people I would have thought would have been adverse to it, it would have been David. Uh, I even saw our governor, Bobby Jindo, who's on the road in Iowa for uh, president. And, uh, and, and he uh, wanted to get something out. Uh, I forget what the issue was. But it was important to him. And so he had a basically selfie video that he took and he put it up. He put it up on Twitter and, and uh, Facebook, I believe, uh, his other social media. Um, so people are getting used to it, more used to it. They're seeing the winners, you know, use it. And I think that as the technology evolves, it's just a question of uh, more people becoming acquainted and people like uh, you, Scott, and others, and hopefully myself and Jim, we're aware of this. We've used it. We've figured out, you know, the conflicts or, you know, whatever it may be, uh, not all the time, but hopefully uh, more, many more times than not. So that's, that's what I think in, in a nutshell. Anybody? Uh, Jack, you want to uh, jump in with us? Uh, Jack Albert. Anyway, um, uh, Scott, your, your response, please. Sure. Well, uh, I'll respond and then uh, pass the mental over to to Jim. You, you talked about how you know slowly things were going in terms of uh, political campaigns and so forth. Well, it's there's one thing that isn't going slowly, and that is the electorate, the people who are out there who are receiving the messages. And in preparation for this, I, I took the liberty to uh, look up some statistics through the Pew Research Center. Sure. And if I could share those uh, with you right now, that would be uh, uh, great. Uh, just as an example, and I hope that you can see this, even though it's kind of in a small square there, the share of registered voters who follow political figures on social media has doubled since um, 2010. So here, here's what it is. The total used to be 6%. Now it's 16% of the totals. And it's those in the 18 to 19, 29-year-old and 30 to 49-year-old uh, bracket that are doing the most. 
And another statistic, you know, more voters are using their cell phones to keep up with election news. Uh, but just take a look at, you know, it's it, just a huge move in terms of the electorate, in terms of how they use this modern technology. And I, I think that the problem isn't so much uh, at the national level, it's at the local level, because nationally, you've got you know, these professionals, you know, which campaign uh, pages have the most likes, for example, uh, and that, and this is for this year, 3 million for Trump, you know, which campaigns have the most followers, 4 million for Clinton, you know, I mean, the Instagram, um, a quarter, you know, 293,000 uh, for Trump. So, um, the electorate has moved, and now those who are involved in campaigns have to hustle to catch up. And you're right; all it takes is one, you know, spectacularly case, spectacular case study that they do it pitch perfect, and uh, everyone else is going to say, "Man, I got to get on that bandwagon." Jim. <laughs> Well, I think you're right on. Again, the question is marketing. I think the technology is there. How do you let people know you're there and interested? And and uh, one way would be, uh, and I've kind of weighed this too. Steve has pushed me in this direction in a very positive way to think about, uh, besides my radio program, I thought, how else could I do this? One way would be to use, a, I have a very extensive uh, media list, rather uh, email list, probably 25,000 names. Uh, 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 I can't really zero that in. I didn't. I made the mistake of not building them on a state level or anything like that. So probably a third of my names come from outside the United States. Uh, but uh, I could though say, hey, email list uh, uh, to tonight at five o'clock. I'm available to carry on a dialogue about the presidential election or whatever. Want you to join in? It's your way of expressing yourself. That would be one way to do it. Another way to, to do it would be if you want to. Uh, focus more on Louisiana if you didn't have that type of email list and they're available to put together would be to say that you do it almost like a radio show that at five o'clock each afternoon, Monday through Friday, that you could join uh, Steve Stavioski, Jim Brown, uh, others uh, uh, to uh, voice your views. We'll he we will be talking about the issues of the day from five to six at every afternoon. And, you know, you would build up just almost like talk radio where someone could call in rather than calling in, they visually come in and uh, that would take some time. And it, it would be beyond a, an older guy like me that, you know, if I were 40 or 50 though, and were interested in broadcasting uh, and, and wanted to enhance my radio presence, uh, I'd sure want to consider doing something like that to, to where you build up a, a good volume of listeners and viewers. So there's ways to market it. And I think if, if say Steve's was doing it or I was doing it, someone was doing it every day, Scott, uh, that would build up and candidates would see the value of something like this, you see. So uh, you're right on about the, and particularly the young people, when you looked at, the, at, at your charts, I saw there, Scott, that you had up around 28% for those 30 and under. Uh, I was talking to my son who, because of my background, is very interested in politics. He says, dad, my friends don't, we don't read the newspaper. We don't listen to Rush Limbaugh and those shows. We don't uh, tune to watch the news on television. We get all of our news that we gather through social media, through uh, the internet, uh, through uh, different accounts that we put together, in, things that we're interested in. And so that's the wave of the future. And uh, so, as I think both of you said, I think it'll come. Uh, it'll come quickly once the uh, once these consultants see the value of it. And uh, give you one quick example. I've got a good friend running for for reelection for state representative, and he did not. He just not that knowledgeable. Good legislator, good legislator, but not that knowledgeable. He didn't know anything about uh, the fact that you could put his logo on a Facebook page that would zero in just to registered voters, uh, or if not registered voters, to people who who have likes of issues that are important to him. How you can streamline something like that. He had no idea you could do anything like that, you see. So the consultant told him and he bought the package. So as consultants, I think that uh, two years from now and this and next, we've got a big senatorial election next year. And by next year, you're going to see a lot more activity in this regard. And um, go ahead. Uh, you're, you're spot on. And I, I think uh, uh, an assumption that needs to be brought out a little bit more, Jim, uh, is that you just can't 
join social media and then get instant results. And if, if you're a candidate who's running for office, I think the way to do it is start six or eight or nine months ahead of time and establish yourself on the platform and start making those relationships, uh, getting policy ideas out, getting your personality out, letting people get to know you. And then the most more important you know, the step after knowing you is that they get to trust you. If you come in on October for a November election in social media and say, here I am, people will think that you're a carpetbagger. They're going to say, who do you, the only reason why you're here is because you're trying to, you know, grab my vote. Where were you six or eight months ago uh, when, you know, I could um, start to get to know you and interact with you. So uh, time is uh, really, I think, unfriendly for anyone who waits too long in social media. Good point. Good point. I think you've got to build uh, that that response and do it. And of course, Vitter did a pretty good job, let's say, with the telephone flow. And I'm on his email list. And for several years, I'm sure you are, St Steve, too. I've gotten uh, a variety of press releases that they all do. But then the, these telephone calls once a week for the last two years, maybe twice a week, Bitter has done the telephone call where I'll say, you know, punch one and come in and talk to the senator. Well, you know, I've hung up, you know, I, it was a nuisance call, but I was impressed that he is that persistent to me. That was uh, that was showing that he was really on top of these kinds of things. And and so uh, uh, and as the scan Vitter particularly is on uh, on the, the Web pages for websites uh, uh, that are around the state. I saw Dead Pelican all the time, other websites and and then does this on Facebook and uh, uh, and YouTube and other advertising forums. So uh, his consultants are picking up on that to some degree, but you, the key you're saying is do it way in advance, build up the credibility. And I could not agree with you more. Um, we have Derek, uh, I'm asking Derek to jump on in. Uh, Derek is uh, actually uh, works for Blab. And uh, certainly uh, I think that his insights would be absolutely, uh, I think, terrific. And I think we could also uh, provide some information, you know, helpful information to him. So, Derek, if you have a few minutes, uh, jump on in. Anybody else? Uh, Jocelyn, uh, please. Uh, I know that you said you're at lunch, but, you know, jump on in. And uh, um, glad to have your input. Um, now, let's see, Scott. I've tried, I've tried what you just did a little while ago, using Manicam. And, uh, you know, and that was what you did was you had a screen and it had a pre presentation that you've you've created. Um, I think that's a, you know, really a terrific device that you use. And I'm just wondering, would you share with us what it is that and how you did it? Well, uh, sure. Uh, and this does not work very well on Macintosh, but it works really well on um, PC. So if you're, you're Apple, there has to be a different solution. But there, there are two products out there that allow the streaming media to become even more powerful because uh, one of them is um, Manicam, which allows for screen sharing. And the other is voice meter, which allows you to share the audio. Audio is always a problem if you want to have videos to share with, with people. So if you have what is, uh, and I'll put it in the comments after the, after the show, voice meter and, uh, and Manicam. And these are things that you can set up uh, ahead of time. And uh, the third component, if, since you asked, Stephen, is, yeah, I definitely uh, Prezi, is Prezi. And the reason I like Prezi is that it allows you to set up a presentation on almost no time at all. Uh, if you have an image, you can just put in the URL to that image and it appears. If you have a video, you can just put in the URL for the video and it appears on the canvas. So uh, it's, those are very powerful tools that allow you to have more you know, power as a presenter when you're on live streaming such as this. Uh, Derek, uh, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. Of course, you know Jim Brown. Uh, you've got to uh, get to know uh, my good friend, Scott uh, Scowcroft. Uh, he and I have been doing things separately and even together, test driving things that, you know, just never, ever wondered if if, if uh, any of us can put this stuff together. Now, you're, you're actually working with Blab, so... Um, how, how do you, and I know we talked about, we started to talk about this. Um, 
what is your role with Blab? And secondly, uh, how do you think Blab can be used in the realm of politics, elections, campaigns? Okay. Um, well, I'm a product designer at Blab. Uh, sure. So I work uh, mostly on the design side, coming up with features, how are we implementing them. Um, I work mostly in mobile uh, and then also on the web app um, here and there. So uh, there's another product designer here, Victor, who works primarily on the web app. And um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty hopeful for Blab in terms of, of, of politics. I think uh, there's a, a really interesting level of authenticity um, with live, live video in general and live media. Um, I think as a forum for politicians, even like at a smaller, like local level, it'd be great to actually hear them, have them in front of the community more often. Um, about a month ago, we had uh, some members of the Midlands police, I think uh, it was Midlands, but it was a community in the UK and their, their local police force came on the blab and was talking to some local residents about local issues with crime, police, um, different community issues. And it's really interesting to see uh, how this platform can be used to really communicate with people who seem very out of touch or you know, removed from regular life. Um, and being able to field questions and, and answer them like honestly and, and immediately is, is really interesting. Um, I think when you when you have like barriers of of communication, like say an email, right? It's not public, so it may be a great answer, but it's not really shared with anyone else. Um, and then things like Twitter, which are generally pretty timely, uh, but they're also very very vague, right? Very summary, short answers, um, more about calling attention without actually diving into detail. Um, so I, I definitely think that that live media is is going to be pretty powerful in terms of communicating with these people who are separated from us um, by levels of power or, or distance, um, but also like right we're breaking this down. We can actually have a full on like discussion and uh, and get into the detail that I think people really are interested in. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Go on. Now, as far as blab, like. My, my goal for Blab personally is to have uh, a political candidate on it. Um, we, haven't, we haven't gotten there yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, we're building in some- Well, I, listen, I, I'm, I'll, make sure that, I'll make sure that we get it done for you. All right, we're, we're building Absolutely. some features to, uh, to really empower question and answering. So um, in the next month, we'll probably see some stuff coming out where uh, the, the question thing that we have going on in the, in the comments, so if you type slash Q, it puts question in front of, of the comment. Now, that w we did that initially as kind of a hack to, to get it out there, but what we really want to do is, is, is empower these questions. So, um, so we've got some plans for the left sidebar where the tweets uh, currently live to, to put the questions there, allow people to, to vote on the questions, and then uh, some other features for the host to actually interact with that. So that um, so Q and A feels much more of an interesting experience. So uh, so yeah, we're definitely we're definitely building some features out for that. I think that's going to help for for political people as well. So if I'm a politician and I come on, people can start asking me questions, and I don't have to like constantly be watching the the chat bar, which is like going quickly, right? Um, I, I'll have a, a different space where I can kind of uh, look at the top rated questions and. Um, and I can address them better that way. So, so I think that's one thing that we're we're personally building um, that I think will have an impact on on politics. Anybody have a question uh, that they want to ask, uh, Derek? Um, well, I guess uh, yeah. Eric is more in the tech, you know, putting the program together. But I guess my concern is someone who has been in, in political office uh, for a long time and spent a lot of money over the years. Uh, uh, you wouldn't believe I must have spent eight million dollars in terms of media production mm -hmm. in, in the in the in the my life of, as a politician. But um, uh, the point I'm making is, how do we get people to know to come uh, to uh, Blab and uh, then stay engaging in it too? We can have these discussions right now, 
but you got to keep it engaging. And I think I didn't know how to do this. Scott, before you came on, Derek, put up some uh, uh, put up some charts up on the screen that I thought was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes it makes it, it guys, you could get people more engaged. I like those charts. Uh, Scott, the only thing I was wondering was where does our Louisiana governor, Bobby Jindal, come in on those charts? <laughs> but they were engaging. They were pretty cool. So if you can have some visuals there with you while you're doing all this, and keep it to where it's not too long. We're more into the technolo uh, technological portion of all. So, you know, we might stay around and chat for a long, long time, but maybe, you know, don't lose the, the interest of those participating and keep it to 30 minutes or so, engage them to come back on again, uh, make it interesting with charts, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, then find ways to get the word out. Hey, this is really great. You ought to go to it. Get people to forward your you know, your link and, and talk it up and get buzz about it. And of course, use your email list and your social media that we each have to in, get more people there. It's great to have 10 people with a conversation, but when you're an elected official or, or you're aspiring to be elected official, it's a numbers game. And mm -hmm. where can I best spend my money? How can I get the best bang for my buck? And how do I get to the largest number of people? So that's the challenge that those who want to use this have. And that's the challenge uh, Derek, say if, if I'm a someone selling the concept for Blab, I want to be able to give some su some suggestions as to how to get more people engaged watching at the product I put out. And I'm sure yeah. that's something you're, you know your company's looking at, and something that uh, uh, and there are a number of ways to do that. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in right now, not waiting in, into the future. But if you don't have the numbers, it's just not worth the time. If I'm a candidate, well, I get on the phone, raise money and get those TV spots on, or I can talk to 15 people uh, oh, oh, in a little TV inter interplay to where they're going to put me on the spot. Uh, and uh, I don't mind being put in the spot if, if there's I'm getting a return in terms of numbers. So the numbers is the challenge there. There's ways to do that, but I'm just talking about where you go in the future in terms of dealing with those issues. Uh, let me interrupt for a second. Yeah. Let me interrupt. Okay, so Will Mooney says a politician can make huge can make huge gaffes live in not really a controlled setting, meaning it's a risk. Uh, mm -hmm. Ray Hiltz, um, our friend from the Hangouts, simplicity drives the popularity of Blab. Uh, Ray also asked a question that uh, any possibility of identifiers being added on replays. That's a question to you, Derek. Um, I'm not sure what he means by identifiers. Uh, maybe you can be a little bit more explicit on that. Scott, I, Scott you know, I, 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 th I think it might mean the, the name and title of the person. Name uh, tag. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. We're working on that um, as part of the experience that's 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 coming up with uh, with that Q and A I was talking about. We're going to be revamping our replays. Um, also, Jim, uh, one thing that we're adding as well is the ability to embed live on another site. So say um, if you're a politician, you want to drive people to uh, to watch your question, live question and answer, um, you know, it's kind of a hassle to tell them, hey, you have to go to blab IM slash blah, 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 blah um, at the right time. So one thing that we're going to enable people to do is just get an embed code. They can put that on their website. So if, if I'm, you know, uh, running for political office, I have a website. You just put a, a full screen uh, embed of the blab. You just tell people to go to my website. You can watch this at you know 3 p.m. and uh, and that's I think that's really going to drive a lot more viewership um, to to this platform by opening it up and allowing people to to view it in other places besides just on our website. Um, that's a good idea. I, 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 today I was posting three or four things where I, I looked for the uh, I looked for a way just to, the link just to put it up and and uh, put to embed it into my site. And I have had four or five different issues or or productions a week, maybe six or seven sometimes, and change them all the time. So that would be wonderful if you could uh, be able to take a good conversation and and embed it into your sites, which so many people, you know, if you're a, I don't care if you're a, a running for dog catcher, pretty much, you're going to have your website in this day and age. It's, it's so cheap and easy to put up. So the more you can, and WordPress is free. And so, and you can, uh, with very little, little help and learning, you can, Steve, I think taught me, if I remember correctly, about uh, uh, putting up these, these links. And so uh, uh, it's a, a great resource is the point. So I hope you all are able to do that. That's great. 
Uh, yeah. let, let me jump in and say, okay, uh, number one, uh, let's see, Jocelyn uh, says awesome regarding the embed and is saying does uh, that factor into Blab's uh, statistics? Uh, how will the metrics be affected? And uh, let's see, Ray again says that would also allow to write a landing page that gives context to the show for sure. Uh, now, one other thing I might add, I actually, I, I built a landing page using uh, the Blab. Um, what I, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about promoting the, the Blab on my website, bayoubuzz.com. Uh, what I did was um, on, on, in the web terminology, there's this thing, uh, basically it's called a wrapper. And so I took the URL from from the uh, the blab and put it within a wrapper, and so it appeared on the site. Now, what appeared, however, was just the video. It was not the right and the left uh, portion. Mm -hmm. It was only the video. But you know, it, I mean, that's that's the beginning. So yeah, embeds uh, I think would be absolutely awesome. Uh, one other thing is that you know one of the things I do once a week is uh, I do a radio talk show with uh, or a political uh, talk show on the guest. And uh, it gets really interesting. Um, I've been using Google Hangouts. I think the only person in the world who's doing a radio talk show in Google Hangouts. Uh, and so people can actually, and I promote that in advance, you know, by the embed. Uh, and I, we go and we, we cut it and edit the content and put it up as, as content of articles for our site. Um, this likewise is a great tool I can see. And, and the difference between this and perhaps the hangout is that with this, you know, you actually can see the, the, um, the track on the both sides, uh, the comments, but also you have, you know, people who can get in and to be able to talk easy, easy, as Ray Hills had mentioned, it's an easy format to enter. And to leave, for that matter. And and I think that um, pre what makes this a killer app, I think, uh, uh, Derek, is that Blab is jaw-droppingly easy to use, and you know, that removes the barriers for political candidates to use it. And you've seen the excitement of real people getting on, and as soon as they see that they can have the robust engagement that everyone else can have, uh, and I think that that is different than all, almost all of the other social media platforms or services that are out there because, you know, you start tweeting, it's not instantaneous, you don't have it building up. Uh, though once you've got the tweets, people can come here and it can spread like like wildfire. So you've, you've really uh, captured some, you've captured a spark in a, in a bottle here. I think. Steve, could I uh, tell you one thing? You've got a number of people I see listening and coming in. I have unfortunately committed to a civic club speech here in about 30 minutes. And so I'm going to bow out and leave a spot for somebody else to come and enter. Fat, fascinating conversation. I look to see all the, the edits and the whole presentation on buyubuzz.com. And for you new folks, my website uh, that has a lot of the things we're talking about on it, uh, technology wise, is jimbrownla.com. Uh, so thanks for being, being my being a part of all this. And I look forward to doing some more with all you folks. Thank you, Jim. Okay. And, and Jim has a, a talk, radio talk show that he does uh, once a week. And so I'm talking to him about actually deploying, uh, you know, Blab uh, with the, his uh, national radio uh, talk show. I think it'd be really kind of interesting, uh, you know, to see how we can uh, do that. Um, one, one thing, uh, if I might uh, throw out, uh, I'm just kind of curious, and, and, and that is, um, is there a better way, and maybe somebody out there, you know, listening can uh, help us out with this, but to promote a blab in advance, obviously you have the tell a little bird and we can all get on Twitter. Uh, I posted this on Facebook, on, on my website uh, and so on. So there's other, you know, say uh, uh, non um, say blab related technology, but is there, uh, I'm just wondering, is there some way that within Blab, those people that, uh, so for example, if we have like 20 people, 30, 40 people who are watching the Blab, this Blab, how can I easily get the, uh, say their, 
their information and to be able to group it. Is that something that, that is easily done or that maybe might be able to be done? Um, not currently. Um, I know as, as a matter of policy, we won't be able to give people emails, you know, of, of their followers, that kind of thing. But, um, but I definitely think that there are some, some big wins, some tools that we can build to help people engage more with their audience. So like, uh, at least within Blab, right? So if you're already on Blab and people are following you, uh, we do want to give you much better tools for you to continue to co communicate with these people once a Blab is done, or once you, if you say, if you want to schedule a show, you need, to, you know, you need to be able to communicate with your, your followers that, Hey, not only did I schedule this show, but this is what it's going to going to be about. And this is why you should be excited for it. Um, I think there's definitely some tools we can build on that, on that front. Um, we have discussed kind of uh, improving, like either creating a landing page for people um, when they when they post a show, a scheduled show, um, to actually start, you know, setting people to that page where they can subscribe and and learn more information about it, and also possibly find some of your pre-recorded uh, your your other blabs that you've done. Um, I think outside of blab. Uh, I mean, it, it, it all it depends on on the size of your audience and and how you naturally communicate with them already. Um, a lot of podcasters tend to have um, an email list that they've been building up over years, and you know that's a great way to communicate with your users to tell them, hey, I'm going to do this blab at this time. You should tune in and check it out. Um, I think live video it hasn't really been figured out uh, the best way to communicate with people, to tell them that something is live. Um, right now, a lot of those channels, like you look at Periscope and Meerkat, you know, they're, they're spamming Twitter and getting people to join through Twitter pushes. But, but really like if you are live and you're posting to your Twitter following and they're posting their Twitter following the, the conversion rate on that is actually pretty low. Um, so you really have to send out to, you know, hundreds of thousands of people before you start seeing thousands of viewers live uh, over, uh, you know, and that's across every platform. Um, so I think whichever platform figures out the best way to communicate with people about live information, um, that's going to be, that's going to be some like a big thing to, to really figure out a big challenge for, for companies like Blab and, and everything else in live video. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think like as far as scheduling goes, um, you know, the scheduling scheduled content, that's, that's as old as, as TV and radio, right? Like that's been around for a long time. And I think like, uh, for, for people who aren't really want to market their blabs and want to drive lots of users, um, scheduling is definitely going to be the way to go and really empowering people to, to, uh, to find good scheduled content, um, and to communicate with your users again on, when you have something scheduled, what are they going to get out of it so that they definitely show up on time or at least watch the replay? Uh, we'll definitely be building a lot of tools there. Uh, uh, we, we, oh, we have Ray Wiltz. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, uh, we have Ray Wiltz. Um, uh, Hillis, I'm sorry. Uh, Ray has a, num a number of shows uh, <laughs> that he does uh, every week. Uh, I think Scott's involved with one, one of the shows, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So really what you have here is you have – you know, some pretty heavy duty Google Hangout people who are now taking uh, to uh, this technology. Uh, Ray, uh, meet uh, Derek and uh, 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 chime in. Sure. Uh, when you were speaking, Derek, I was thinking because nothing is it. First of all, I, I love the platform. I have to say I was a bit agnostic at first thinking, oh, really? <laughs> you know, another live video platform. And I don't, don't really have time. But there's a lot going for this platform, as you can see. I think by just the rate of of, of adoption by by everybody, and certainly a lot of uh, Google uh, Plus Hangout hosts. Uh, <laughs> you know, when we're you know talking about scheduling the content, uh, there's a couple things that, for instance, this experience here, uh, I got a I got a Hangout notification from Scott that you're doing a blab. Now I follow Scott on Blab, but I'm you know, I kind of tried to tone down the notifications because, you know, you're, they, they zip by and, and, and they become a nuisance. So when I, I came back, I said, OK, I'm going to join this lab. But I had a difficulty finding it 
Mm -hmm. uh, I had to go to the Blab site and then, okay, well, where's Scott? So I went to the, you know, what's happening live right now and scroll through that. And then I found Scott's picture and then, okay, this is, this is it. Uh, mm -hmm. and so when we're talking about scheduling and, and promoting something in advance, a couple of things come to mind. One is you mentioned the landing page. Uh, that would have been, that's excellent. But even if we had a banner, some sort of visual thing that we could send out, you know, that has the details of the show, maybe what's about, what it's about. Um, also, is there any chance that there would be an integration with calendars? Uh, mm -hmm. Because that would be super. Because if I subscribe, that means that I, I want to see this. Uh, and but there are so many blabs you tend to miss it if you just count on the notification. But if it's in your calendar, you're going to get a notification from your calendar, which means a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely um, a lot of stuff that we can be doing. Um, really, the the homepage is is kind of still in this MVP stage where uh, we built a, a very basic list, and it's not smart in any way. It's just measured. Like I, I'm not exactly sure how how it's measured right now, but um, it's it's a really dumb measure, basically, of of like what's the most active is going to be at the top of the list, and and then it's filtered by the tags that you've selected. Um, and so there's a huge uh, area for us to improve the experience based on on uh, finding content, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and as you, you know, you're you're talking about the calendar integration. We actually initially had that. Um, in our email. So if somebody scheduled an email that you, or sorry, if somebody scheduled a blab that you were following um, with that person, you would get an email saying that they scheduled it and it would, it would uh, have an ICS file attached to it that you could just add to your calendar. Um, I don't know if we're still sending those out um, because it ended up getting really spammy because people would follow, you know, like 20 or 30 people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every, it's like people are extremely active on blab, which is great, but then it really kind of, over, like our, our notification system was basically too basic for for the amount that people were using it, and so um, so we've had to make some changes there. And it's you know it's been it's been a rush basically to like fix these problems, fix those problems. Um, and we haven't we haven't had a, a great uh, you know an amount of time to do a co comprehensive overhaul of the way notifications work. Um, it is in you know everything is planned. We definitely know that we want to tackle notifications and make it so so much easier for you to find blabs that you scheduled yourself, so you can you know jump into them, change them, or even if it's like about to go live, find it very easily. And then of course notifications for your followers that hey this is going on, or these people that I follow are all you know they've all joined this blab. I should jump in there with them. Um, so there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of room for improvement. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you've been drinking from a fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a, a two comments from Will, uh, Will Mooney. Uh, that is an issue I see no method to easily find a, a specific person who you follow and uh, also allow a choice for users if they want it added to their calendar or not, which is, you know, and uh, add off the web page and not email, you know, to be able to distribute. So um, getting back, if you don't mind, to the political realm, mm -hmm. uh, obviously uh, Donald Trump has done a lot in terms of uh, Twitter. <laughs> I mean, every time he tweets, you know, I mean, what, he has, I don't know how many, uh, 600,000 uh, followers. I, I don't know what the number is, um, may, maybe more. So that is going to, uh, I think that type of um, – uh, presence on, say, Twitter, wouldn't that seem to follow that that uh, that would be ideal for, uh, say, technology like yours and Periscope or or uh, or Meerkat? Um, you know, somebody having a lot of followers or people having a lot of followers on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Because they can easily, I mean, my God, like getting back to our governor's race that's going on right now, uh, I think one guy has 120,000 followers on Twitter. Well, I mean, he can certainly push, 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 you know, his, his uh, say, interview or whatever he may want to do on, on Blab. So I think one thing that's interesting about things like Twitter, Twitter accounts or Facebook accounts is you really can't tell – if the if the candidate himself is answering these questions, even even on forums like uh, Reddit AMA, um, where you know Barack Obama did one, it's really hard to tell if this is 
the real, you know, Barack Obama has answered these questions, or if it's some staffer, mm -hmm. you know, some somebody who's who's behind the scenes, but you know, works on policy and, and knows the answers to these questions. I think um, obviously the lo the higher scale of of candidate. Um, hey, Scott, your <laughs> your image is actually flipped now, um, so we're looking at it all backwards, but. Uh, the higher the, the scale or, or level of the candidate, the, the harder it's going to be for them to jump on to a platform that's live because, you know, they're used to having a certain amount of coaching, um, a certain amount of, of, of backup, basically, of, of their staffers, you know, telling them, you know, this is a good answer, this is an appropriate answer. I think um, what I want to see personally is like lower level, like local politicians really using this platform and, and other platforms because like, we 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 know basically what Trump is going to say, right? It, you know, Bernie Sanders, like he has a very comprehensive policy um, website which really lays out all of his plans, and then even from those, there's links to um, the policy papers that they're they're either citing or they've written themselves. So, like, I think I think at a very high national level, they don't really need to use. Uh, platforms like Periscope or, or Blab nearly as much, but like, like my the county supervisors here in San Francisco, I don't really know what any of them particularly stand for. Um, I can see their voting records on particular on particular things that they voted for, um, but even still, at a, the level of transparency is like seems very limited um, because I can basically just look up uh, you know the the roll sheets for a particular uh, discussion. But um, but actually getting to know the candidates is it seems very difficult because they don't get they don't get TV time they don't get radio time uh, they don't they may be somewhat active in social media but uh, you know a simple sit down thirty minute Q and A with one of them would give me a much better idea of who they are as a person how they're they're likely to vote um, who their constituents they believe they they represent uh, versus somebody who at a national level they have to kind of represent everyone so they they are very active already. Uh, that, would, media. that would take a very yeah. courageous politician, Derek, to, to sit in a blab and, and, and be open to that. I, like we're going through an election here and one of the problems that we're having, a lot of criticism uh, that the MPs are running for parliament <coughs> is having is the fact that they're just reciting the same talking points every time they're in front of mics. So to get someone on a free form platform like this would be a big challenge. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, talk radio, though. I mean, you have you have these you have Donald Trump and others, uh, the the higher uh, level politicians, lower level politicians. They go and talk radio. I mean, they love to go and talk radio, mm -hmm. and and so you have callers that you can't even see, mm -hmm. okay? And they ask questions, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So, you know, I, I know there's a reservation, maybe because it's visual. But you had the same type of surprise, element of surprise in talk radio that you have as you would have on something like this, or am I missing something? Well, I don't think I've, I've, I don't think I've been surprised by an answer or response from a politician, certainly in the last four months during our sort of campaign here. And I think the difference may be the moderation. If you have a talk radio host who's been very experienced, that host can control the conversation and pry things out of a politician, try to get them off balance and get something new. Uh, whereas uh, just an open talk show might be more difficult for a politician to navigate. And, and we should mention that you're uh, coming to us out of Montreal. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're having a Canadian election right now. So, like, uh, uh, we have a comment here and... Uh, uh, it says, bear with me, uh, talk radio is just that, radio, not video. Live, unfiltered video is different. So, I mean, I'm missing it. Why Why is live, unfiltered video uh, different than, say, somebody, and I understand what you're saying, a moderator uh, can filter it. Uh, but they don't really, you know, I mean, sometimes they know what the person's going to talk about. Sometimes they, they know the caller. But a lot of times they don't. And so... You know, it, it, I guess I'm just very positive on these type of technologies, want to deploy them as much as possible. I just think that perhaps, Stephen, I think there'd be a lot of preparation needed for this, more so than a talk radio show. Number one, that the two people that you know are going to be okay, probably okay is the host, the person that sets it up, and then the politician. But 
appearing live in front of a video camera, having someone jump into that seat for say, okay, you've got 10 se- or 30 seconds to make your point and then you got to go off. Uh, that, that's very intimidating. So you're going to, you're going to draw people into that seat who don't, are either extroverts or, or, or are very, very passionate about their point of view. So I think it, the dynamics would be different. Okay. Also, radio shows have screeners, so it's not that someone comes on to a radio ah, show cold. True. They yes. They they're already pre vetted, so mm-hmm. that well, that'd did, be terrific if yeah. if Blab could come up with something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, to some extent, you're vetted. And it depends on on the show, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Rush Limbaugh, sure. Uh, you know, you vetted. You probably have to you know have a you know, some kind of uh, d- diploma or something like that to show who you are. For Rush Limbaugh? <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. No, you said diploma. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, I graduated right. from seventh grade, right? Well, I'm I, sorry. I'm, so some, some type of identification is mm-hmm. really what I was getting at to, cert- to certify that this is – yeah, who the person is. Uh, so, Derek, um, in terms of the, the political realm again, um, what do you think is the the hot media uh, that you think might be able to work with Blab? Uh, say the uh, the latest technology that might be out there that you think might be a, a good mix with with Blab. I know that's a tough question, but uh, hmm, a different technology. I. You know, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, like, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with other technologies that are that kind of are, are going hand in hand with with uh, live video. It's, it seems like live video is, is kind of a a one off piece, almost almost like a, a novel product, right? Um, there isn't really that many things that, that kind of go together with them. I mean, I think Google Hangouts has probably experimented the most with. Uh, integrating third-party technologies into the Hangout experience, but um, as, as somebody who doesn't use get Google Hangouts that much um, or hasn't, I'm not sure like what people found to be the most uh, the most useful or the most um, you know important to them to to really further their conversation. Uh, the last time I saw it, you know, there was some some pretty interesting screen sharing features. Uh, where you could draw on a screen and, and people could look at that together. Um, obviously, there's ones where you can share, you know, sh- like screen sharing in general seems to be the the, the one that, that people use the most often um, to really, uh, you know, make their, their live video experience have a se- certain uh, sense of multimedia. Obviously, when you're watching like ESPN, they've got, you know, the ticker down below and uh, they've got highlights, kind of what's going to be talked about next. So, like, I think things that, that really add to the experience of a live video, uh, those, are, those are the technologies that we're going to try to incorporate. But I don't, um, for us, at least at this point, we want to be very careful about adding things. We want to make sure that it doesn't take away from the experience by having, you know, all these moving widgets and third-party mm-hmm. things jumping in on your screen. Too. Less is more. Your strength is that you, you've made it easy and you've just made it accessible. It's yeah. the people's uh, medium. You know, yeah. one, one, rec- one recommendation I would make is something that we dealt with uh, early on uh, in, in this blab. Uh, we actually had, a, I had a, a technical issue, uh, video and audio. Uh, I've done a bunch of these as well as Hangouts and uh, I haven't had an issue lately at all. So a green room of sorts is really what we're talking about where you can set up, you know, make sure that, you know, camera, you got your makeup on, uh, you know, your hearing aid on, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I mean, that's, I, I'm just, I'm just. That wasn't that addressed out. to me, right, Stephen? <laughs> no, no, no. I, <laughs> what was that? Oh, sorry. My <laughs> no, but seriously, I do think that that could be a, a, a real help. I don't know if that's something that y'all are looking at, but I, I know that, uh, the problem we had lasted about 15, 20 minutes. And so we couldn't even launch the show. Yeah. So we got that taken care of. We've talked about doing a pre-show experience basically since day one, um, because people come in here, they get some experts on, they want as guests and it's really hard to kind of vet that everyone's equipment is going to work just fine. So, uh, the short, you know, the, the hack solution that we've been using is we use a, a another service called appear.in. Um, which is basically like a, a very fast, um, 
Google Hangout session that you can do privately uh, just to test with your guest. Hey, we're going to we're going to go on in 15 minutes. Uh, here's a link. Go to this. It'll test if your microphone and, and video camera are working. Uh, so you can kind of work through some of the technical difficulties. Again, this this puts kind of pressure on the host to to do this before each show, and um, obviously it's something that we want to integrate into Blab, so it's a much more seamless experience. But we just haven't had the time to get there yet. Um, you know, to go back to 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 politics as well, I think one area where I, I want to approach politics before jumping into campaigns. So I think campaigns are really interesting um, because you you get to know about people before you vote, right? It seems like that's always the best time for people to get interested in politics. But really, I think that's like the worst time to get interested in politics um, because you, you have to make kind of a split second decision on somebody who's pitching to you. And of course, they're only gonna be showing their best side. Uh, what, would, what I wanna see on, on Blab first is actually you know, an, an incumbent, right? Somebody who's already in a position um, just come in and talk to the community about the decisions that, that they have to make on a day to day. Um, I think that's kind of the part of the political process that, that at least we as Americans don't really care about much. Um, we only really care about the elections and, uh, but they never end. so <laughs> is there a period between elections? It doesn't seem to be. <laughs> well, it's, it's becoming like that. Definitely. <laughs> Um, which is unfortunate, but like like I said, at, at a local level, I mean, people are mayor for like mm. decades, right? And and in that times, in that time frame, nobody really cares about what they do except when it comes to election time and if there's a guy who's better or worse than them. Um, but really, like I'm very interested in in all the smaller decisions that are going on all the time because those are the ones that really affect the place that I live. Um, and you know, I, I went to a, a, a civic uh, planning meeting. There's a, a building on my street that's being renovated. Um, they're turning all the garages uh, into into um, into rental units. And I really wanted to go to this to the civic uh, meeting about it, um, but it was right in the middle of the day, and it's at city hall. And I don't like as a young person who has a job. And I, you know, I can't just tell my boss, "Hey, I'm going to take some time off to go to this to, to go to this meeting that I may have no impact on whatsoever." Um, I just want to be, you know, involved in the political process. Like that's not a legitimate excuse to to leave work, uh, sadly. And so, well, I if think I were that, your boss, I'd let you go, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I might have been able to go, but uh, <laughs> but re, you know, realistically, that's why you see kind of local politics is dominated by the elderly, right? People who are retired who can go to these kinds of meetings and and decide things. And so, there's a lot of uh, a lot of tension, especially here in San Francisco, between you know people who've lived in the city for a long time and kind of the young transplants who are really like pushing people out and. Housing is really a really big deal to to get engaged into this because housing meetings always happen, you know, middle of the day. It didn't even have a specific time. It said sometime after uh, 8 a.m. on Wednesday. And it's like, all right, am I supposed to just show up and wait all day long until, you know, this specific uh, this specific event actually gets, you know, uh, talked about? And so I think things like Blab would be great for that because you know, we could sit in on this discussion that's going on uh, from anywhere, right? I could be on my phone, I could be at work, I could be, you know, on my computer, and I could actually get to see how, how these things are actually happening. And maybe even with Blab, uh, you know, to, to get my say, right? To like hop in and, and have a discussion about it, or even just like post in the comments, like, you know, I agree or, d or disagree with, with what's going on. So I think it, um, as far as po politics go, I think there's a huge opportunity to become much more involved in local politics. Uh, now the issue there is getting the local pol politics on board, right? <laughs> well, uh, the, the only reason why that's not happening, uh, really, the only real barrier to that happening is the internet connectivity where the meeting is being held. Because other than that, there's no reason why you or I couldn't go to uh, any public meeting, set up a camera and uh, a microphone and broadcast it live. And Blab makes it easier than any other format. So uh, I've, I've tried that a few times using Hangouts and, and <coughs> mm -hmm. miserably. 
Um, <laughs> I will see about the next uh, commissioner meeting for a hospital district I'm involved with. I'll see if I can do a blab with it and then report back. That's a, a great idea, Scott, because you could have almost a running commentary. If you set up with somebody else, so you have two people on the blab, you could be like those two old guys on the Muppet show, you know, sort of just say, throwing in, you know, comments as, 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 as the thing went on. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for letting me jump in. I got to run. So uh, thanks a lot. Great meeting you, Derek. Uh, great seeing you again, Stephen. So take care. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I've, got, I've got to run as well. Uh, Derek, sure. nice meeting you, Stephen. Thank you for having me on. I hope the two of you are able to continue the conversation, maybe bring some more people in. Well, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just about ready to close out. Uh, Listen, Scott, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll put this up, like I said, uh, on Bayou Buzz and all over the Internet uh, to the extent that we can. Uh, and I'm going to have to bow out in just about two or three minutes. But, um, yeah, is there uh, – I'm just trying to see how we can uh, how we can use this in, in, uh, in the area of elections, politics. Again, uh, we have a big election coming up uh, for governor, uh, statewide elections uh over the next two months or so and uh um have have toyed the, you know with the idea of uh having a politician you know just in one-on-one -on -one like you and i are right now and uh having an interview uh it could be a closed interview it could be just say myself or uh interviewing or i can open it up i mean that's you know those are the choices uh that we have um but it's like I guess getting over that barrier that uh, we, you know, making them feel comfortable is really, I think, the, the, the key. Yeah, and I think there needs to be a certain amount of buy-in, too, from the people who are going to be filmed. Because it, it, it doesn't feel right to just walk into a meeting and, you know, you've got your video camera or your computer or your phone out and you're just sitting there with it open. Um, you know, the people who are, are being filmed, they, they may not know that they're being filmed. They may not know what's going on. Um, so in a, in a certain sense, it's, it could be very disrespectful, right, to be out there just like recording this for Blab and people are talking about it on Blab. Uh, and the people who are actually in the meeting, in the discussion, uh, don't know that it's going on. It, that's not really the experience that we want as, as a, a live video platform either. So I think... Um, so I think that there definitely needs to be some thought into how how this could be expanded into local politics more um, instead of, you know, just a guy with a camera kind of, you know, putting the pressure on on politicians to, like, do the right thing. Right. Because we don't we also I think one thing about Blab is it's not about it's not about performance. I mean, some of it is right. Some of talking to to anyone, right, is, is a bit of a performance, but we want people to be authentic. And if it's just another, if it's just another media outlet um, where I know I'm being filmed and some people out there in the world are watching me and judging me, um, you know, that's no different than, than what we get on TV. Uh, and so we really want a different, more authentic experience and, and, you know, something has to be, something has to be different about the whole, the way it's done as well. Well, it's 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 a uh, I guess citizen journalism for one. I mean, that's something that uh, uh, I mean for sure. Having these tools that you can use, uh, I, I know that like with my news website Bayou Buzz, um, you know, using these tools, whether it's Hangouts or Blab or or uh, Periscope, uh, Meerkat, Meerkat. I mean, you know these give us a real advantage because others aren't using it. And so consequently, you know, we're kind of trying to figure out how it works and how it works better and how we can use it better. So from that standpoint, I think that a lot of the people who are on today, you know, um, are, are doing that and <laughs> will either succeed or fail in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one last thing, speaking of uh, um, about, uh, I guess capturing somebody uh, confidentially. Uh, I just wrote a column about that. Uh, I happened to see here in Louisiana uh, in the governor's race, uh, they are, they have what's called trackers. And those are people who have cameras. And I don't think this is necessarily dealing with Blab, but, you know, you just dealing with technology, you got to be aware of it. And so um, they, what they do is they go and they, they record 
the candidate, wherever the candidate is, you know, you've seen that uh, happen to Romney and, and uh, the 47 percent and all. But what these people do and are going a little bit further, they are actually taking the camera and recording the private conversations of the politician mm-hmm. and uh, people who innocent people who just go up to the politician and want to talk. Mm-hmm. And and so uh, I happen to see some guy with a camera on on uh, on top of a pole, facing the politician, uh, to the, the the people who's talking to the, po- the politician. Their their back is uh, uh, to him, uh, was to him, and uh, so I wrote a column about it. You know, saying, look, you know, this is really offensive. You mm-hmm. know, d- you know, you ought to let people know what is happening. Uh, before you do it. And then I did some research as an attorney and uh, I said, you know, this is actually sounds and looks illegal to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot, uh, now that's as per Louisiana law, you you know, you cannot uh, intercept, you cannot intercept a um, oral communication. Mm -hmm. And unless there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. So, I don't know if that would affect, you know, Blab in any way or, or, or any of the other technologies that we're talking about in any way. But, you know, nevertheless, you still have to be aware of these things. Somebody may, you know, come along with, I mean, like, for example, uh, I, I start the Blab with my uh, laptop. But um, if I had an iPhone, right, I could start the Blab with my phone. Am I correct? Yeah, you can. Mm-hmm. So then you could have that that type of situation. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that is inherent for Blab that that makes it less likely that those things will happen is that it's it is a conversation platform, right? So right. even if I'm the only one, I'm walking around with a camera filming people. Um, this platform doesn't promote that kind of behavior, sure, uh, because it's you know it's conversation driven. We don't notify unless there's more than one person in the, in the room, that kind of thing. So, you know, that kind of behavior can happen, but yeah. really, you know, as our conscious decision is to dissuade people from doing that. Obviously, yeah. other other live video platforms um, may run into these kinds of issues. Obviously, right. there's been issues with recording of sports events and those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, every every platform has has its issues to deal with. I think ours... The challenge is, is going to be much more, can we get the politicians on uh, to talk in front of a live audience? Uh, and not so much, you know, are they getting sure. filmed behind their back? But right, um, right, right, right. definitely, definitely problems. <laughs> that everyone has well, Jared, yeah, no, I, I, they're definitely problems. And uh, I know that YouTube and uh, Google, they have the issue with video, showing video during a live uh, uh, broadcast. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's an issue. That's something we've had to deal with, uh, transfer of the video to YouTube and so on. Uh, those are things I think, you know, issue that you would have on, uh, this type of environment. Um, I mean, if, if, uh, Scott was able to present, you know, uh, as graphs, then certainly using Manicam or something like that can present a video. But, you know, like I said, those are those are not issues that you're having right now. So, listen, I really thank you for you taking your time uh, and joining us. Again, I'll put this up on Bayou Buzz uh, and I'll put it on other uh, uh, other formats and uh, try to uh, spread the word. And uh, uh, let's see. Let's uh, I understand the legal points you would bring up. At what point does a question for a political candidate answer become public record? Uh, well, it's, to me, I think it's public record as soon as they, uh, if they're on this type of format, uh, it's public record. Or if uh, a person is, um, if he's in a uh, given a, a debate or forum or something like that, that's public record. So you can go and you get your, say, Periscope and record because, you know, people would expect it to be recorded, but not in the type of situation, situation I described where innocent people are having conversations with uh, the the uh, say the politician, you know, to me at least, I think that's against the law. And here's the thing that happened. That's happening here in Louisiana. It's going to happen all over 
the nation in 2016. And, uh, and so hopefully it'll stop. <laughs> hopefully this column will help wake people up and will let them know that, hey, you know, I better think twice about what I'm doing there, you know, because it just isn't right. Derek, thank you. And uh, Will Mooney and everybody else, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you uh, joining us. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Take care.